Pesticide drift occurs when a pesticide moves through the air away from where it was applied, the target site. It can move as a vapor or as a liquid in small droplets. Drift can damage non-target plants or animals. For example, the herbicide 2,4-D often is used to control broadleaf weeds such as dandelions in a lawn. The granular form of 2,4-D can turn into a gas or volatilize and drift away from the application site and harm sensitive plants like grapes, tomatoes, and redbuds. Depending on the type and concentration of pesticide and weather conditions, gas vapors may affect sensitive crops miles away. If a liquid spray is used, small droplets can be blown away from the target site, in this case the lawn, and affect sensitive plants nearby. The person applying the pesticide, the farmer, homeowner, gardener, commercial lawn care applicator, is responsible for preventing drift. The best way to prevent drift is to use common sense and follow all label directions. The label gives the legal requirements and will guide you in using the pesticide safely and effectively. Whenever you're considering making a pesticide application, keep in mind that a variety of factors including weather conditions and method of ground application can influence drift. The applicator must evaluate all factors and make appropriate adjustments when applying a product. Use the pesticide only on the sites listed on the label. You'll find the application rate, application method, protective clothing to wear, storage and disposal information, and any environmental hazards listed on the label. One environmental hazard listed might be toxicity to bees. Pesticide drift can poison bees when it reaches bee colonies or flowering plants where they are foraging for pollen or nectar. Several factors affect the ability of a pesticide to drift from the site targeted for application to a non-target site. These include formulation, application method, temperature, and wind. The formulation of a pesticide determines how that pesticide should be applied and the possibility of injuring non-targets. For example, the herbicide 2,4-D can be purchased as an ester or an amine. The ester formulation can vaporize to a gas after application and be carried by the wind, while the amine formulation is less likely to vaporize. In general, granular formulations rarely move or volatilize very far from the application site. Another factor that can affect pesticide drift is the method of application. Fine spray droplets have greater possibility of drifting from the application site, so application methods that produce larger droplets are less apt to drift. Use lower pressures or use sprayers with large orifice nozzles that will increase the average droplet size and reduce potential pesticide drift problems. The pesticide label may list required or suggested pressure or nozzle sizes. In addition, try to apply the pesticide as close to the target as possible. A third factor is temperature. High temperatures, such as above 85 degrees during or immediately after application, may cause some pesticides to vaporize and move away from the application site. Pesticides in a vapor or gaseous state may cause damage to neighboring sites. The pesticide label will list any application restrictions due to temperature. A fourth factor is wind. Wind, even in small gusts, can move pesticide spray droplets away from the target site and injure non-target plants or animals. Mix and apply pesticides only when winds are calm, between 3 and 10 miles per hour, or whatever the label says. If you are near a site containing plants or animals that are sensitive to the pesticide, Make sure that any slight wind is blowing away from that sensitive site. And as mentioned before, larger droplets and spraying closer to the target can reduce the chance of drift. Careful selection and use of pesticides will reduce the risk of harm to people and the environment. Read the label before you purchase and before you use a pesticide. I'm Jan Hingstrom with the University of Nebraska Extension Pesticide Safety Education Program.